Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss the desktop GARP modeling environment and how the GARP best subsets procedure is populated and how those parameters relate to measures of omission, or what are also known as false negatives, and commission, or what is also defined as false positives. This is a presentation that I've been working on for several years with my colleague and friend, Christina McNeeset, out in Oregon. This video is focused on how to select the parameters and how to understand the parameters for populating the best subset selection in a desktop GARP experiment. If you're interested in learning more about omission and commission and how those are important in selecting best models, check out the other videos on the SEER Lab YouTube webpage. The first decisions we're going to make about the best subset procedure start by activating the procedure when you populate a model. Once we've done that, the remaining parameters will be active and you can make changes. So let's look at those changes. First, if you have enough data in your occurrence points from the species you're trying to model, you can select the extrinsic option and the extrinsic relies on having some subdivision of data provided to GARP about the species and having enough data to subdivide those into internal training and testing. In this case, the species highlighted has 41 records, and half of those records would be used during the model building process, and the other half of those records would be used for evaluating models in the best subset procedure. That would be what we call an extrinsic omission measure using real holdout data. If your sample size is small, for instance, you've got a species of conservation concern and don't know much about uh, how many records are available, or you have a low sample size, you can also select the intrinsic option and let GARP do some internal model evaluation. Our next decision is to select whether or not we're going to use a hard or a soft threshold. In the case of a hard threshold, that means we're setting an absolute value of omission, in this example, 10%. That's the line I've highlighted. So here on the y-axis, we have the omission from each model constructed inside of this experiment. And we have the measures of omission on the y-axis and the measures of commission on the x-axis. So the hard omission threshold will set an absolute omission value, and any model that's above that value will be excluded from consideration for the best subset. The next decision to be made about omission is how many total models need to be selected from the total number of models run that meet that omission rule that we set in this example 10 percent. If you've selected a soft omission threshold then the models with the lowest omission will be selected in whatever percentage you select in the distribution. And in that case the total number of models under the hard omission does not apply. In our previous example, we had 20 models selected, and that would select 20 models under that hard rule. And in this case, we're just selecting 20% of the distribution that are lowest overall in their omission of the total number of models constructed. Once we've chosen our omission criteria, we then need to select our commission criteria. Because recall, we're trying to find the balance between models with low omission, that was what we were working on previously, and now we're trying to select which of these commission values best represent the potential geographic distribution of the species. Recall that commission is the total percent of the landscape predicted. We don't want to predict too much of the landscape, and we don't want to predict too little. So we have to select some 
uh, distribution there. And in this case, we've selected 50% of 20. Uh, if it's a hard criteria, then we would select 10 models or f half of those 20 models. If it's a soft selection, the commission threshold would be 50% of the 20% that we saw a moment ago. And in that case, in each of those cases, we would arrive at a best subset with 10 individual models. So now that we've made a selection, either a soft omission threshold and some percentage of the distribution, or a hard omission threshold, like shown here, a 10% hard omission threshold, 20 models selected under that rule, and then 50% of those models to again arrive at 10 models in our best subset. To give you an idea of how this value is selected, the median value of these 20 models would be calculated, and the 10 models closest to the median value would be selected for our best subset. One thing to point out here is that these model parameters for how to construct the experiment are going to run up to 100 times in this example and select out the best 10 models. Now one thing to note for new GARP modelers is that once you select some criteria for deriving a best subset, GARP will only run enough models to meet these criteria. So what you might find if you have a good fit between your environmental variables and your point distribution, GARP may run something like 65 or 70 models. Okay, I'll just say approximate. It will only run models up to the point where the 20 models under the 10% omission are found in this example with a hard omission criterion. Once you've selected your model parameters and you've selected your best subset procedure and loaded your environmental layers and been prepared to build this model, you have to select your output. Where are these models going to go? And here we're going to write those out as arc info grids. You can learn all about that mechanics of that process on other videos on this channel. What I also want to point out here is that we've selected the button for the best subset. This will give you a separate individual folder with only those 10 models out of the total number of models that were created. If we use the example of a moment ago and the modeling experiment requires 70 models to arrive at the best subset, in one folder you'll have all 70 models and you'll have a separate best subset containing just the 10 grid files, the 10 coming from here, which makes up our best subset for this given experiment. So to briefly summarize, we're going to use measures of omission. Those are going to be either intrinsic or extrinsic. That decision will be based on your total in of occurrence points. If you have enough for extrinsic, this is best when you can implement it. And once we make that decision, we're either going to select a hard omission threshold or a soft threshold. This you'll determine as to whether or not you want to set an absolute value, for example, 10%, or if you want to just take 20% of the models at the lowest omission without selecting a hard cutoff. Then we're going to select the total number of models. If it's hard, we'll say 50% of uh, sorry, if it's hard, we'll just say a specific number of models, for example, 20 of the 100 run from the 
previous slides, or 50% of the distribution if you've selected a soft threshold. And this 20% will be relative to the total number of models that you've designated in the experiment. So that sets our omission criteria. Now let's review our commission. Once those omission rules have been set, we have to designate the proportion of models that we want to select. So if we had a 10% hard omission rule selecting 20 models and a 50% commission rule, then we would select 10 models closest to the median commission value of these 20 models. We could also select 50% of the distribution from a soft omission, and we would select 50% of the models that meet that soft omission rule. Now, if we were building 100 models and selecting 20% of those, and then selecting 50% of those, we would still arrive at 10. It's the most common rule of thumb in the literature is going to be to create 100 or 200 models in a single experiment and then to select either a 50-20 hard omission or a 50% of 20% soft omission to arrive at a best subset of 10 models. Occasionally you'll see a larger number of models being summated, but in general you typically see best subsets added up to a value of 10. Now you can check out other videos on this site where we discuss how to map and interpret those, uh, and that's available here on our SEER Lab YouTube site. As always, if you have questions about this video or other videos that the SEER Lab has produced, you can drop me an email at jkblackburn, or you can leave a comment here on YouTube, and we'll try and address that. Good luck, and happy garping.